This is Stephen McHugh reporting for Unique Dyslexic. I Radio. Hello, this is Stephen McHugh for Unique Dyslexic I. Today I'm bringing you episode three from series two of uh, Unique Dyslexic I. And on this show, I'm going to talk a little bit about my passion for dyslexia and why my social enterprise Dyslexia Pathways Kick and my podcast supports the social model of dyslexia and social enterprise. Before I start, I'd just like to say that we're coming up to the 26th anniversary of my career in dyslexia and inclusion. 1995, I think I started my work. And during that time, I've worked in many colleges supporting students. I've worked in uh, many universities. I mean, right now I'm coming up to my 13th year at one university where I've been supporting dyslexic, neurodiverse and disabled students on their degree courses and postgraduate courses. And much of what I've learned about dyslexia, neurodiversity and disability, I've learned from the students that I've supported. It's been a really great journey and I've enjoyed it very much. Now, if you'd have asked me about any possible career when I left school, basically I stopped going when I was 14. I I would have said that um, I didn't have an academic bone in my body, that I had no academic talent whatsoever. So let's get on with the show. Uh, And again, what the show is about is I'm going to be talking about why I am so passionate about dyslexia and why my social enterprise has a social model of dyslexia focus. So here's the article now. Thank you very much. This is Stephen McHugh reporting for Unique Dyslexic. I Radio. I was at some training recently. And I realised that I hadn't really communicated reasons why I set up my dyslexia focused social enterprise, Dyslexia Pathways Kick, and why I am so passionate about dyslexia and neurodiversity. Founded in 2008, Dyslexia Pathways Kick Community Interest Company was the world's first dyslexia focused social enterprise. We were also one of the first dyslexia focused organisations to promote the social model of dyslexia. We believe that this social model of dyslexia, together with social enterprise, offers a more positive, inclusive and more to the point dyslexic solution to the issues we face on a daily basis. The social model of dyslexia says that it is society that disables us rather than being dyslexic itself. This disabling begins at school where we are not taught in ways that we can learn effectively. We do not see it as a fault within the teacher, rather we see it as a failure of initial teacher training to provide prospective teachers with the skills they need to effectively teach dyslexic children. I would also say the same goes for neurodiverse and disabled kids. Dyslexia Pathways Kick challenges the medical discrepancy disorder and deficit model of dyslexia because we see it as inherently disabling and because it has nothing positive to say about dyslexia or to dyslexics. I would say this medical model of dyslexia has only served to disable us further rather than liberate and enable us. In the UK, there are 6 million dyslexics alone. It is believed that between 10 to 20% of the population of the world are dyslexic. Many dyslexics can feel isolated and alone. Always remember, you are not alone. Research indicates that many dyslexics never receive an assessment for dyslexia. Indeed, my own research carried out in 2016 shows only 19% of those assessed as dyslexic were assessed while at school. So that kind of calls into question this number of 10 to 20% of the population are dyslexic. Sylvia Moody wrote in 2010 that for an unassessed person, there is a commonly experienced sense, sense of not knowing who they are. Penny Aston, MSc, MBACP, said this lack of self-esteem and self-confidence can often feel bewildering, shaming and have long-term consequences. As the social model of dyslexia suggests, many dyslexics fail within education and training, not because they're not bright enough, but because our education and training system fails them. As a result, dyslexics are six times more likely to be long-term unemployed. The negative experiences of school can leave many dyslexics with low self-esteem, poor self-confidence and even long-term mental health issues. This is not good enough. My good friend Dr. Ross Cooper wrote in 2006, We challenge this deficit model of dyslexia in favour of a social model that maintains we are not disabled by our dyslexia but by our expectations of the world we live in. Well, there's nothing wrong with being dyslexic as such. He goes on to say, We would argue that dyslexia is a life experience that arises out of natural human diversity on one hand and a world on the other hand where early learning of literacy and good personal organization and working memory is mistaken as markers of intelligence the problem is here is seeing difference incorrectly seeing difference as deficit 
and this can begin from day one at school. Put in practical terms, it is disabling to expect that everyone thinks in the same way as everybody else when dyslexic are more likely to think visually and than verbally or laterally than logically or intuitively than deductively. Learns to read in the same way. Reading is about accessing meaning. It's merely st- The rest is merely strategy and there is always more than one way to learn anything. That we make sense of information in the same way. We don't which is why multi-sensory information is easier for everyone to understand, that we can take multiple instructions. Many of us struggle with that, that we can learn to take notes while trying to listen. The issue for us is that in a non-dyslexic education system, there only appears to be one way, one correct way of doing it. And that one correct way of doing it doesn't fit us very well. Dyslexia in education. In relation to teaching dyslexic children, 74% of teachers did not feel satisfied that their initial teacher training provided them with the skills they needed to identify and teach children with dyslexia. That's from Dyslexia Action in 2012. In an independent YouGov survey commissioned by Dyslexia Action 2012, almost two-thirds of parents felt dyslexia was not recognised across the system. Pupils with special educational needs, whatever that might mean, including dyslexia, without statements, are around 10 times more likely to receive a permanent exclusion than pupils with no SEN special educational needs statement compared to compared to pupils with a statement of special educational needs who are around six times more likely to receive a permanent exclusion one of the ways society disables dyslexics is education from day one at school the vast majority of dyslexic kids are failed of course this failing has consequences for society but for dyslexic kids as well further consequences of unassessed dyslexia Research by Jack Rack from the Dyslexia Institute showed that dyslexia is three or four times more prevalent in the prison population than amongst the general population. Up to 50% or even more people in our prisons are dyslexic. This roughly costs around £35,000 a year to keep somebody in prison. It is thought that unassessed dyslexia costs the UK £1 billion a year. A year. Now, believe if, if you think about that, many dyslexics are so over, over 35% of dyslexics are entrepreneurs. You know that is that is a waste of potential, a waste of people's lives, and uh, we have to change things. So we have to, you know, just think some of that 35,000 pounds a year, or that one 35,000 pounds a year, could support 10, 15, 20 dyslexics in school throughout the whole of their schooling. The Dyslexia Behind Bars project showed 53% of 2,029 prisoners at Chelmsford during the project were diagnosed as being dyslexic compared to 10% of the UK population. It's just a waste of money not supporting the dyslexic kids in school. Focus Prisoner Education says it costs 65,000 to imprison a person in this country, in the UK. Once police and court costs and all the other steps are taken into account, After that, it costs over £35,000 a year to keep somebody incarcerated. Research by the Westminster Achievability Commission in 2017 showed many of the barriers that dyslexic and neurodiverse individuals face within our society. Many neurodivergent people, this includes dyslexics, are ready and willing to work but find themselves faced with insurmountable barriers. One of those insurmountable barriers is the way the application process works, for example. A few key findings from the report said, There is a lack of awareness of what we can do. Disclosure can often lead to bullying and discrimination in the workplace. Government measures, including access to work, are inadequate and often not known about by employees and employees. The Inequalities Act is being implemented inadequately. Dyslexics can and do succeed in all areas of society. As I said before, 35% of entrepreneurs are dyslexic. Over 90% of successful dyslexics, when asked, said they were successful because they were dyslexic, not because of their support at school. Dyslexics tend to be lateral thinkers, have strong emotional intelligence, empathy, big picture thinkers. They can see the big picture and can think in three dimensions. We have fab minds that are just not accessed by society. As I've said before, Dyslexia Pathways Kick, my organisation, was the first dyslexia-focused social enterprise to have a social model of dyslexia focus. We believe that this social model of dyslexia focus offers dyslexia a more positive, empowering and inclusive way forward. I believe we must change how we think and talk about dyslexia or risk repeating the same mistakes that happen with us 
and our children in school today happening way off into the future. We've tried the medical model of dyslexia and it just hasn't worked for us. We have to change the narrative because if we wait for society to, we will wait a damn long time. Thank you very much. This is Stephen McHugh reporting for Unique Dyslexic. I Radio. Okay, thank you very much for joining me on uh, Unique Dyslexic I. This is Stephen McHugh saying goodbye. See you on the next show. If you would like to help channel out, please leave a like. Please subscribe. Always happy to listen to your comments. That would be fab. Um, It also might help me with my quest to get more funding for the show. I'm thinking about trying to run another Kickstarter to see if I can get more funds for something like a voice recorder so I can do interviews. But that's something for the future. Everybody keep safe. Be well out there. Peace, love and grooviness. Be seeing you.